Hi, Hi. confirming a drone flight operation? Yep, uh, what's your, uh, name? Alan Yu? Alan Yu. Let me just pull you up here. Okay. Okay, now be on point five, not above 400. Yep. And, uh, just give me a shout when you're done. Alright, sounds good. Thanks, see Thank you. you. Bye bye. Hello. Hello, confirming I finished my drone flight. Okay, that's Alan? Yep. Thanks, Alan. Right. Have a good day. Thank you. See ya. It's starting to rain here. Actually, fortunately, I started flying before because actually I don't have a lot of time today in general, but I was around this area and I was thinking, okay, might as well try to get approval. And this time, actually, they asked me to phone in the tower. It kind of makes me wonder if it's due to I guess when you requested for it, because for this one too, I basically requested it for a few days, like at least three, so they had a huge head notice, and it makes me wonder if they want you to phone in just to confirm for the guy that's there, like, okay, oh yeah, today we have this. Because many times so far, they're just like, okay, good to go, but overall, painless experience. And an update for those SFOC stuff, I mean, at this point, it doesn't sound like that Transport Canada guy wants to be helpful at all, because I basically want clarification, like, hey, is this okay like to use for example like i even straight up said how about this in terms of things like monitoring things like the airplanes and all that because for me it's one thing i know from hands-on experience what is safe on how i'm operating it them i don't know because there is no official like say sources saying this is basically good to use so even with that they basically didn't even answer the question because the issue at the moment is just from reading that whole document, like their risk assessment and all that, they even say this is basically just a guideline and your plan or whatever may or may not include. So essentially there is no actual like say, I guess template format that you just like fill in that they would expect. It's basically just as long as what you show answers the questions in terms of how what you're doing is safe, you have like your plan and all that, then it should be good. So again, like just in terms of things like the detect and avoid, yo, I'm basically flying this line of sight. That means I can't fly it any higher or anything like that that I cannot see, for example. Here's my plan. If you say I need more, then you should tell me, like personally, like, okay, what are you so fearful of so I can address it? Like even the example, like I said, technically it is a lot safer with the way I fly to stand here, for example, look at the drone and basically do regular pans and stuff like that. If there's anything I notice coming from kilometers away, I can quickly come down. And I guess to show even more, I basically said, for example, it sounded like to me, they were really fearful when I wrote down, for example, you know, the max height or whatever, 500 meters over 1600 feet. That's basically if, you know, this thing screws up and so forth. I'm basically just saying, technically, there's the quote, threshold of things like flyway and all that i don't intend to actually fly like that high so basically that number is basically stuck in the guy's head and basically getting a response like we won't support for example a flight of 1600 feet i mean again i clarified it exactly saying that is not my intent to actually fly that i'm giving you like for example that as a basis for worst case scenario which technically would be the same thing even for a basic flight i mean we're talking about like a flyaway emergency for example it almost feels like I should have just not mentioned that in terms of, oh, well, that's just the max height like the drone can go. I should just say, oh, I intended to fly 405 feet. That's it. Impossible for the drone to actually go up. I mean, at this rate, that's what it seems like it has to be. I even asked too, like in the email, just in case, for example, there's any concerns in terms of the height, in terms of I fly in line of sight, considering the area over eight nautical miles away from the airport and so forth, the only real fear, honestly, should be just some random plane, for example, like recreational or whatever guy flying. I even asked them, give me like a number that you would be comfortable with in terms of, like, just say a max height in general, because for me, it's just about getting started. I mean, I would assume it's kind of like for drone delivery people where like in those articles I read, they say, oh, it's too dangerous to fly a drone around city areas and so forth. So they have to start in areas that are basically like rural, like there's no one there. So it's kind of like the same mentality I have, except in a more recreational person point of view. So let's start, start somewhere. But again, there's no response. It's just that thing like, we don't support whatever, 1600 feet. I was like, 
again, I clarified that is more for like emergency so you can gouge everything. Technically, again, that's the same risk you would have even if you have a basic flight of like 30 meters. Let's see if it screws up and basically I'm telling you that is the max technically that drone can actually go. Like in terms of programming, it should actually stop there if it has a cold flyaway. I guess the error was trying to think this was going to be kind of like, I guess, a customer service point of view where the person is helping you in a way where, hey, this is my job, for example, you have questions, I'll take the time to help you answer each and every one of them. Because in a traditional business, if you don't do that, you basically lose business, correct? Whereas this is more like government oriented, so they can have more of a, hey, who cares? Like, I don't have to deal with you. If anything, I thought this would be more like the NAV Canada process. Basically, you just submit the stuff, someone reviews it, and if they feel for whatever reason what you're doing is unsafe, then they'll come back to you with their new, like say, I guess, proposed numbers and all that. I guess in many ways, like for here in Canada, that's why things like a MAP Mini would be really great, huh? Basically, just fly it whenever you wish, as long as you're, quote, being safe. In terms of drone crashing, though, how about this one? This one said, U.S. military embarrassed as catastrophic drone disaster cost millions of dollars. A U.S. Navy spy drone has struck an object during liftoff, causing millions in damages. According to the U.S. 5th Fleet based in the Persian Gulf, the drone hit debris during its ascension, leading to major damage to its port side. The Hawk systems are believed to have either been flown into Libya or taken by sea. The incident is thought to have caused at least 2 million in damage to the unmanned ship. This is classed as a category of Class A mishap. When it says Class A mishap, are they referring to like say the type of airspace? Or are they referring to like say, I guess, the level of severity or competence of the accident, so to speak? Since the Navy didn't give a specific price tag for the repairs, but it's reported they paid $23 million for the drone. However, to USNI, its current value is $180 million. I guess with this story example too, huge difference between someone flying a drone like this, huge for example, in this way, versus again, like for someone like myself who just flies it as a camera basically, in a really safe way. Makes me wonder, for like a new person, would you just go for something like a Mavic Mini in these cases? At least like here in Canada, since at the moment it pretty much gives you the ability to fly various places without all this bureaucracy and all that. Ah, no time to do anything much today. Lucky I got the flight in before the rain and stuff. You don't want an elbow smash for me. Alright, see you guys later.